The world is full of beautiful buildings with carefully crafted designs from some of the brightest architects around. But then there are the buildings that look like they were created in the middle of a fevered dream. Join me for today's video as we take a look at 15 of the most terrible building and house designs. Number 15, Exceed 4000. All right, let's start off our list with something so extreme that this terrible building never even saw the light of day. The name Exceed 4000 sounds like it was ripped straight from a science fiction novel, and today it may as well have been. The Exceed 4000 is another example of a building concept that was a little too ridiculous to be executed and will forever remain as just an idea. Although it was never erected, the Exceed is the tallest building to ever be designed, with the goal of reaching the impressive height of two and a half miles tall. The building was designed by the Taisei Corporation for Japan in 1995 and was designed specifically to tower over Mount Fuji by 735 feet. Now, so why was it never built? Well, the Exceed 4000 would have sat right on the Pacific Ring of Fire and would be susceptible to earthquakes, tsunamis, and internal air gradations that would be harmful to anyone at the top levels of the building. Perhaps the Exceed 4000 would have been better suited to just be built about anywhere else in the world, that is, if anyone was actually paying for it. If this building had been built today, it would cost between $479 billion and $1.2 trillion to build. Number 14. The Walkie Talkie Center If you look at the building at 20 Fenchurch Street in London, you'll be impressed, but also probably left scratching your head. Perhaps better known as the Walkie Talkie, this incredibly top-heavy building was built with just one thing in mind, money and lots of it. The building almost balloons at the top to maximize the floor space at the higher stories, which would allow the owners to charge even higher rents the further up you go. And although it's a complete eyesore in the London skyline, they actually built it shorter than they originally planned. But it wasn't just the height that made the walkie-talkie a disaster, it was the shape of the windows. The building has a curved facade, which reflected the light into such concentrated beams that they melted cars and started fires. Sunshades were placed over the glass on higher levels to reduce the insane heat lasers, but the shape of the building still directs powerful gusts of wind down to the street level. I guess this building may be a better idea for a fortress than a luxury office building. Number 13. Ray and Maria Status Center The Ray and Maria Status Center were designed by the award-winning architect Frank Gehry, and was such a decorated and prestigious architect at the helm of this project, what could possibly go wrong? The Ray and Maria Status Center opened up in 2004 and houses MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Labs the Department of Linguistics and Philosophy, and the Laboratory of Information and Decision Systems. The building is home to some of the school's best and brightest, but too bad the building concept didn't manage to reflect that. The building was at first celebrated for an interesting and bold angular design that Frank Gehry said would challenge the laws of physics. And challenge them they did, but Gehry quickly learned that you can't fight physics, and the building lost the battle, badly, in 2007, just three years after the center's completion. MIT sued Gary for negligence after identifying some pretty major design flaws and structural issues. An inefficient drainage system caused the walls to crack, giant icicles hung over the walls during the wintertime, and mold was quickly taking over the building's exterior walls. So many repairs and alterations were made that it ran the school a bill upwards of one and a half million dollars. The construction company behind the building said that they warned Gary about his ridiculous design more than once, but he simply did not care. Number 12, Vidara Hotel and Spa. When a building is dubbed the Death Ray, you know you messed up somewhere. And the Vidara Hotel and Spa in Las Vegas is no exception. The Vidara Hotel and Spa has an interesting design with a unique curved shape, which also proved to be its downfall. Everything seemed fine during construction, but things started to heat up when patrons started using the swimming pool. The curvature of the glass the building is encased in acts as a magnifying glass for the sun's rays and it's especially bad in the pool area. The people inside suffered from serious burns, as if they were ants under a child's magnifying glass. One guest even claimed that the building design let the death rays burn his hair and melt a plastic bag he was carrying. Lesson learned, curved building designs may look cool, but the heat they create is just as cruel. Number 11, The Flintstone House. The Flintstones was a great show, had some silly movies, but were all around a solid family. But that doesn't mean that anyone should try to truly bring them to life. That's exactly what William Nicholson did when he built a real-life Flintstones house in Hillsborough, California in 1976. 
The entire home is about 2,700 square feet and was made by spraying concrete onto steel rebar and wire mesh over an inflated aeronautical balloon. An incredibly ambitious endeavor, no doubt, but the Flintstone house is kinda just terrible. It in fact looks so ridiculous that many of the neighbors complained so many times that a local architectural review board was formed. The most recent complaint was in 2019 when the town of Hillsboro filed a complaint against the current owner, stating that their modifications were not only a public nuisance, but weren't made up to code. It's insane to think that a house like this actually exists and wasn't built originally as a movie set. And while I certainly hope the Flintstone House residents are happy, I think we can all agree that this one is pretty terrible looking. Number 10. Sutjagen House Also known as the Wood Skyscraper, the Sutjagen House is one famous yet odd-looking residence in Russia. Standing 144 feet tall with 13 stories, the Sutjagen House is home of Russian entrepreneur Nikolai Sutjagen. He began building this home back in 1992, and his original plan was to go no higher than two stories, and he took his inspiration from the wooden homes of Japan and the Netherlands. But the architecture spoke to him so much that he decided two stories weren't enough, and so he kept going, and going and going, until he created what we now see today. He claimed that somehow the house looked too weird and ungainly with just two stories, so he added more until he was finally happy with how his home looked. All in all, the Sutjagen house took 15 years to build, all without a building permit, and is made entirely of wood. So yeah, the Sutjagen house is an illegal structure, but that's not why it was condemned in 2008. Sutjagen spent some time in prison, and without his upkeep, the wooden home began to deteriorate. It was deemed as an immense fire hazard, especially because the town it resides in is also mostly wooden buildings, with the fear that being the Sutjagen house could potentially catch fire, fall over, and spread the flames to the rest of the neighborhood. By 2009, 11 stories of the home were pulled down, finally making it a two-story house, but the remains were finally destroyed in 2012. So while this house may look totally awesome, the fact that it's made entirely of wood makes it one poorly thought-out design. Number 9. John Hancock Tower What good is a building design if it can't withstand something like the wind? The award for the tallest building in Boston went to the John Hancock Tower after construction was complete in 1970. The original plan showed that it would tower over the local historic Trinity Church, causing controversy before construction even began. And this only proved to be an ill omen of things to come, for what is now simply referred to as 200 Clarendon Street. The John Hancock Tower was originally built with blue reflective glass, which began to fall off into the streets below piece by piece, and police had to quickly close off the area around the building. At first, it was believed that the buildings in the area created a wind tunnel, and these high-powered winds would expose integrity issues, twist the glass panels, and eventually whisk the glass panels away. But researchers discovered the real issue. The building was expanding and contracting at a rapid speed because of the vastly different temperatures inside and outside of the building. This caused the glass panels to be stiffer than originally expected, and instead of absorbing motion, the panels transferred it and shook the energy out of place. All of the 10,344 windows of the John Hancock Tower needed to be replaced by more appropriate single-paned heat-treated panels. Because plywood was quickly replacing fallen windows, the building earned the nickname the Plywood Palace. Number 8. The Burj Khalifa The Burj Khalifa in Dubai has a lot going for it. Presently, it's the tallest building in the world and was completed incredibly quickly for something of its size, just six years. It also hosts some of the richest and most powerful people in the world who stay in the multi-million dollar rooms across the building's 163 floors. It really is a modern marvel, but there's one critical design flaw. No matter how intentional it may be, the Burj Khalifa isn't hooked up to any municipal wastewater treatment system. So anytime you flush a toilet, all of the contents are going down underneath the building only to be sent out of the city by truck later on. Sure, the system may be relatively efficient, but for such an advanced building, this is an incredibly arcane system. These waste-varying trucks can wait around all day, sometimes for even 24 hours before they can dump everything out. And with a place like the Burj Khalifa, you're looking at about 7 tons of number 2 a day, in addition to the 15 tons of wastewater. For a place to show off just how modern it is, you'd think they would have designed a better plumbing system. Number 7. Lotus Riverside Complex just because a team can come up with a building design doesn't mean it's good, and that's exactly the case with the Lotus Riverside Complex in Shanghai. The city of Shanghai built the Lotus Riverside Complex to provide residents with upscale apartments for the locals. 
but like other entries on our list, the project, which had good intentions, was ultimately rushed and used low-quality products and construction techniques. Unfortunately, the Lotus Riverside complex was doomed from the beginning. In 2009, one of the buildings collapsed, killing a worker. Not only did this affect the investors, but also made the hopeful families nervous about moving in. Half of the units had already been sold for about $60,000 a piece, and after the incident, people wanted their money back before they even moved in. The entire incident caught the attention of the government, and nine officials were tried for causing serious accidents, and six of them were found guilty. What could have been some much-needed housing turned out to be a bureaucratic, financial, and ridiculous conceptual nightmare. Number 6. Ryugyong Hotel Some famous buildings have all sorts of fun nicknames, but you know you're in trouble when a building has been nicknamed the Hotel of Doom. The Ryugyong Hotel in North Korea has also been called the worst designed building in the world, one of the world's ugliest hotels, and is said to be the world's tallest unoccupied building, seeing as how it's been completely empty for the last three decades. Yeah, that's not a very good sign, but neither is the way the hotel looks, because as you can see, the hotel is one unattractive building. Everyone's hopes were pretty high for the new hotel when construction began in 1987, thinking that it would be a world-renowned masterpiece going higher than the Eiffel Tower and offering 3,000 rooms and five revolving restaurants. And you know, this all kind of really does sound great on paper, but even now, the hotel has not seen a single guest, and the doors seem to remain permanently closed. The tallest building in North Korea has proven to be a complete waste of time, money, and resources. Number 5. Kemper Arena When you concoct a bad design when you're still at the drawing board, there's no excuse to execute the plan when you know it's a bad idea. And that's exactly what happened when the Kemper Arena in Kansas City was built. It was built in 1972. This was to be the new home of the Kansas City Kings, and needless to say, people were pumped. The original architect even won an honor award from the American Institute of Architects. Too bad, though, that in 1979 the Kemper Arena's roof would collapse from a heavy rainstorm. And the irony here is that the American Institute of Architects inspected the building just one day before the incident. The Kemper Arena was built with a flat roof. As people were voicing their concerns, the engineers decided to add a temporary reservoir to reduce any stormwater runoff but there weren't enough drains. The local code required at least 64 runoff drains to be built, but only eight were made, rendering the reservoir all but useless. It could only hold two inches of water before it overflowed, causing the entire roof to collapse. The collapse was so bad that the pressure even blew out some of the arena's walls. Number four, Elephant Building. While the Elephant Building in Bangkok, Thailand is home to offices and a small shopping plaza, it's mostly residential. It's also kind of hideous to look at from the outside. And while it's technically called the Change Building, it earned its nickname because of its shape and color. It looks like a giant elephant in the middle of the city, including tusks, eyes, and ears. The Elephant Building is 335 feet high with 32 floors, making it the tallest building in the district by far. But somehow it was named in the top 20 world's iconic skyscrapers of 2011. But whoever the judges were that year, maybe they needed to get their eyes checked. While there's no doubt that it may be a marvel, it's clearly not made with style in mind. And while it was built in 1997, there were still plenty of other skyscrapers popping up around the world that had a more futuristic look. Plus, when someone asks where you live, who wants to respond with, yeah, I live in the Elephant Building? Number 3. Jiayi County Church Architects have been designing and building some stunning churches over the centuries too, with many of them being some of the most beautiful in the world. And more often than not, you don't have to be a worshiper to appreciate them. But the Jiayi County Church took notes on all of these churches only to crumple them up and throw them all away. Located in Taiwan, the Jiayi County Church is just one giant glass building designed to look like a high heel. And while it certainly succeeds, it's the last place you'd want to go to reflect. Actually, it's the designers who should be asking for forgiveness. What were they thinking? The purpose of a high heel shaped church was to get more women to come to the church, plain and simple. Someone should have told them there's a lot more to women than just high heels. But if you didn't already know what it is, then chances are you'd think that it was just a big sculpture. And needless to say, the local women were not too pleased with the design, and it failed miserably. Number 2. The Aeon Center Originally called the Standard Oil Building, the Aon Center opened in 1974 in Chicago and became the city's third tallest building. The designers had the entire external facade of the building clad with Italian Carrara marble, creating a fancy feast for the eyes. 
But the thing about Carrara marble is it's thinner than most cladding materials, and one marble slab detached before the building was even completed. The slab crashed right onto the roof of the Prudential Center next door. That was the first incident. The designers didn't build the Aeon Center with Chicago's dramatic temperature swings in mind, so much of the facade started to decay and deteriorate a little too quickly. Going from summer to winter made the thin marble bow outward permanently. This meant that the materials were losing strength, so today the Aeon Center is a deformed version of what it was originally meant to be. Number 1. Astra Tower in Hamburg How the Astra Tower in Hamburg is still standing is anybody's guess, but the real question here isn't how, but why. Construction of the Astra Tower finished in 1971, towering over Hamburg's red light district with an ever watchful eye. But instead of making something beautiful, the designers gave us what looks like the world's largest and most ominous game of Jenga. The tower sits right at the top of a hill, making it an odd but iconic part of the area skyline. Once home to the Astra Beer Brewery, the building was bought several times, and luckily for the Astra employees, the brewery eventually needed to move. There were plenty of promises to change the design of the building to something a bit more visually appealing and much less precarious, but those promises were never kept, and the Astra Tower was demolished in 2005. I'm pretty sure that no one was upset once the building came down, but a new Astra Tower was built in its place, which opted for a glass facade as opposed to the original's concrete, and made sure to fill out the base so it doesn't look like she's ready to topple over at any second. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.